Is this thing on? Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Summits Podcast. We are here in Cardinal Court, West Lafayette, home of Purdue University. I have not burst into flames yet, so all is good. Um, we have a special guest for you guys today, Miss Katie Geralds, the head women's basketball coach here at Purdue University and Beach Grove native. So Katie, welcome to the Summits Podcast. Thanks guys, appreciate yeah. you. Thanks Absolutely. For Thanks for having me on. Why don't you give, um, everybody probably knows what you're doing now as I already mentioned, but right. why don't you give everyone a little bit of background on yourself? So born and raised on the South Side of Indy in Beach Grove. Uh, family's all still there. Mom and dad, same house. Uh, brother, sisters live close. Mm -hmm. um, went to Beach Grove High School, uh, won a state championship. That was, that was really cool for our city. Um, and then this past year, our, our, our boys team won a state championship too. So it's kind of oh, all cool. coming full circle here. Right. Yeah. Um, when, we were, when you were in high school, was the um, was basketball already in uh, different classes or was it all yes, one class? Yeah, so we were 3A. Okay. 3A, okay. yep. Um, pretty sure we would have won it all. It didn't matter who we were playing. Nice. We, 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 <laughs> weren't, we weren't losing. Um, so yeah, so then obviously come up here to go to Purdue. Um, here from 03 to 07, graduate get drafted, play in the WNBA, mm -hmm. um, and at the same time in the summer, play in the WNBA, play in Europe as well. Um, played here for three years in, in the States and then seven over there. Okay. Uh, blew my knee out, uh, didn't quite get back to the competitive athletic ability here to play in the States, but um, had an opportunity to coach at Marion. Uh, the job came open, you know, from Indy, yeah, why not? Uh, it's uh, probably the smartest thing an IU grad has ever done. He hired me for the job. So <laughs> well th said. thanks, Steve Downing, for the opportunity. Yeah. Um, you know, I was there for eight years, uh, a year, about a year ago today, come back home. And uh, here I am leading my alma mater. It's uh, basically a dream come true. Awesome. Um, we did look at your stats from yep. your days at Marion. And folks, if you guys haven't looked this up, seriously, if you're a sports fan, Look at the record of the teams that Katie coached at Marion. It's it's pretty damn impressive, and I don't know there's too many coaches that can, that can show that kind of stat. Yeah, it's uh, you know I uh, my, I had some really good players, won a lot of games. I think we lost 50, 51. Um, we lost 16 my first year, so we go 16 okay. and 16 my first year, and then I think we lose 34 in seven years after that. So not a bad wow. deal. Um, <laughs> it, you get really good yeah. players, it makes up for all the dumb coaching. Um, <laughs> you know, they uh, they held it down for us, so uh, I was super blessed. Yeah, yeah. awesome. Um, when you were coming out of high school, what I, you, I'm sure well you were missing the end of basketball. Um, you had a variety of options, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Was it always Purdue, or what did you narrow it down to? Ironically, it was never Purdue. Really? Um, okay. I, yeah. I, I'm a little bit closer. Obviously, Beach Grove is a little bit closer to Bloomington. Grew up a huge Bob Knight fan. I remember the first time I felt like I really wanted to, to play college basketball and have my, my mom and dad really immense me into the sport was I went down to watch Damon Bailey play. Mm -hmm. um, and my, I'm nine years old, I think in the early 90s and my dad and I are in the nosebleeds of Assembly Hall and <laughs> you were nine uh, yeah what a terrible place to watch a basketball game too oh, I mean, I was <laughs> <in> <laughs> yeah. you know Mackey Arena is a little bit different um, watching the game but it, I think I remember I tapped my dad like this is this is what I want um, and he's like all right let's let's chase it sign up for AU basketball join a really good team um, and then that was it I mean Hey, you hear the story about Larry Bird having a key to the high school gym. I mean, that was me, right. 6 a.m. My brother was coming along with me, finally start to drag my teammates with me. By my senior year, we won a state championship. And, uh, um, yeah, I think that's when, when I knew I wanted to play, uh, but it was never Purdue. Um, I always wanted to go to Tennessee my entire life. I okay. wanted to play for okay. Pat Summit. Yeah. Um, my junior year, you know, I think about, I had about every offer on the table. Um, I went down to watch a Tennessee-Connecticut game. Uh, and a week later, I committed to Purdue. Uh, I just didn't feel like home. I, I know yeah. as soon as I was here on campus, I fell in love with the coach, Christy Curry. Um, you know, I still talk to her, you know, twice, twice a week sometimes. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's at Alabama right now. And um, yeah, she just kind of stole my heart. And um, this always felt like home. As soon as I was on campus, I was like, this is, this is a place for me. And uh, to, to have my mom and dad at every game, my, you know, my family at every game. I lived with my brother for two years up here. Um, okay. So he's like my best friend. Nice. And uh, I had the time of my life for four years. So what happened to Bloomington? 
Oh, I just didn't. No, well, we didn't hardly ever lose to IU. I know we never lost down there. We lost actually one game to IU. I never, never won. The, the women's team wasn't very good, um, you know, growing up, and that has kind of but flipped the switch. But they could have been had you gone there. Um, it just never <laughs> felt right. <laughs> actually, I went to a game and I was like, no, this isn't for me. Yeah. I am. I, I cannot wear the crimson and cream. I'm I'm born to wear the black and gold. You mentioned you mentioned you had a knee injury. When did that happen? I want to say like 2009, 2010, maybe 10. I was playing in Greece. Okay. Um, friendly game at the beginning of the year, blew my knee out. Um, have surgery over there. Yeah. Yeah. That was it. How was it like coming back from that obstacle? Um, for me, uh, I think just it was mindset. Um, I knew I wanted to play again. It was, I think I played for what three years, three or four years after that. Okay. Um, you know, and uh, just mindset every day. Um, knew every day was going to pre prevent a different challenge. Some days were going to be easier than others. Um, you know, some days the the 10 pound weight uh, felt like it was 500. Right. But it just mindset, um, grinding it out and, and putting putting my mind on the end goal, um, and just taking every day that I needed. I need. I knew I needed to tackle one day at a time to get to where I wanted to go. And yeah. um, that's. I mean, that's what it was. And you know, eight months later, I'm back on the court. Awesome. Uh, we talk a lot about attitude and that competitive spirit in particular as, as it relates to this podcast, um, those affected by cancer, especially a, a newly diagnosed patient. Mm -hmm. if, if you were talking to, to someone recently diagnosed by can with cancer or just like you would be if someone who a player had, had recently blown out their knee, what, what kind of, um, I guess, inspirational things would you tell someone in term, from an attitude standpoint? Yeah, I mean, I, I just think, I think it's just mindset, you know, um, you know, knee injury is, is quite different than, you know, someone battling for, with cancer or battling for their life, but um, just, just taking every day and just tackling every single day, um, no matter what that is, maybe, maybe the, the win for the day is, is getting up and brushing your teeth. Maybe that's sure. the win for the day mm -hmm. and making sure you count all of those wins. Uh, maybe the win for the day is, you know, going out to just walk around the block, you know, whatever it is, making sure that that is your mindset that I'm, I'm going to get that win today. Um, and, and just staying the course it's, um, you know, I, I think about a knee injury compared to, to, to someone fighting cancer. Um, you know, it seems small, but it, it's all relatable in, in your mindset and how you, how you do tackle and how you do. Um, just mentally prepare yourself for, for what's going to happen the next day. And yeah, my mindset was the end goal and what I wanted, but um, at the same time, you can't get there until you tackle today. Um, same thing with basketball. We talk about it all the time, like, yeah, we want to we wanna win championships in March, but we can never win a championship in March if we don't win the day we have today. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so if we don't win the day of the two-hour practice, if we don't win you know, getting out of bed or brushing our teeth, going for that walk, whatever it is, um, you're never going to get to the opportunity to win that championship. Yeah, that's well said. So it reminds me of a, there's a, a video on YouTube of Admiral Cravens, um, the U.S. Navy, speaking at commencement at the University of Texas. It's probably, I don't know, more than five years ago, ago now. Uh, if you've not seen it, look it up, have your players it. watch it. Okay. Um, it's, it's pretty inspirational, but he takes the same approach, meaning, he focuses on when you get up, make your bed. Mm -hmm. There's a reason why when, um, when, when men and women are going through training uh, at the military academy, they really spend a lot of time on making their bed. It sounds so monotonous, but right. it starts the day, do day yeah. off. It gets you to check off that first box of getting something accomplished that like day. That. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. You know, I've heard a lot of things about like John Wooden. Mm -hmm. um, and they say when John Wooden was in a hotel room, you would have never known that he was there. Okay. Always made the bedroom clean, hang the towels up, hung the towels up, and that's the way he taught his his kids, uh, you know, the young men that he coached. And I mean, wow, the translation to to wins and championships. I mean, right. It's, it's a unique way to to look at life. Yep, it's it's amazing. And <clears throat> kind of what you said, like you know, the wins for the day. How many guests we've had that have talked about like focusing on those mm -hmm. small wins every day and just kind of looking, taking each day as it presents whatever it presents to you and kind of continuing to improve on it and how that's helped like I mean I, I mean I can't, probably can't count how many guests we've had now that have like that's been a key part to their right. um, progress and their moving forward not just someone as a, a patient or someone with with cancer but like family members or things like that like it's it's interesting how those little wins can right. really start to stack up from right. a mentality standpoint.
Right. And, um, you know, another, I mean, you can't, we can't win tomorrow until we win today. And then at the same time, we can't look, we can't look back, right? Mm -hmm. We have to live in the moment. And, um, no, it's a, it's a, it's a very, very special way to, to live your life and the challenges that life presents sometimes. Yeah, for sure. So Katie, um, one of the cornerstones of this podcast is talking about what your cancer story is. So Mm -hmm. for, for you, what is your cancer story? You know, um, I think uh, a couple things I can, um, I've had a, a young cousin who was at Riley. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think he quite made it to six or seven years old, um, but to, to watch him battle uh, and to, to even at that sung, a young age to live his life the way he did was so kind of unique for our family. Um, and then I remember back, I go back to high school. There was a kid um, in, in the neighborhood in, in Beach Grove, maybe in my sophomore, junior year, and this kid was 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 battling brain cancer. Okay. Um, and I think he he ended up passing away a few years later, um, maybe even even through my college. But the the strength he showed every single day, um, mm-hmm. the smile he he had on his face, uh, you know, he knew what the end goal was. His family knew what or what the end was gonna be, but he, I mean, I, I can remember him coming to a game and just wrapping, wrapping my arms around him and him wrapping his arms around me and, and what he saw me as, right? And, you know, he talked about me being an inspiration. This, this young man was an inspiration to our entire community and probably a lot of the reason why we started winning a lot of basketball games, just put a lot of things in perspective. Yeah. Um, I think that's what, that's what, you know, cancer can do um, for, for other people on the outside. It's, um, it's an ugly, ugly disease that can just change anyone's life in a second. But, um, you know, it's, it's, it's here and, uh, it, it, it's all a matter of like that, that, that mindset of winning every single day. And I think about little Timbo and, and Cody and, you know, those are probably the biggest stories that have had such an impact on my life. Sure. Well, I know our uh, our college eligibility is long gone, <laughs> um, but so what we do today is we talked about earlier taking that competitive spirit that we still have mm-hmm. and channeling it into something. And, and so for the Heroes Foundation, it's channeling it into doing something to battle cancer in the state of Indiana. Mm-hmm. And so all, all the college competitiveness aside, you know, cancer doesn't care if you're an IU Hoosier or a Purdue Boymaker or Notre Dame Irish or whatever. Right. It doesn't care, and so um, that's why we're excited to be here because of the, some of the research that we're doing um, that we're funding here at Purdue, and then also talking with the folks earlier this morning about some of the collaborations that they're doing with the folks at IU, with the folks at Notre Dame, and other institutions actually all working together. Which, you know, when that happens, it's like that whole teamwork concept. Right. You know, a lot more is uh, possible when we work as together as a team. So uh, we're excited about it. I'm, you know. Again, all joking aside, I'm happy to be up here, happy to learn more about what's being done up here. Right. And we're happy to be a part of it and, and look forward to partnering more. Um, I'll be certainly rooting for you most that. of the season. <laughs> a couple exception of games. two games. Yeah, yeah fair um, enough, fair enough. But uh, I, I, like, I like your spirit. I like what you're doing up here. Um, and good luck and I Thank hope you have much you success so going much forward. And, uh, thanks for everything you do. It's, uh, you know, we're... Uh, we're lucky to, to be a, and have an opportunity to, to make impacts like this. And um, I appreciate you guys. Yep. Yeah, thanks thank for, you. Thanks for right. joining us and, and uh, helping share your story and reaching out, helping us reach out to others. You bet. And thank you guys for listening in on this episode of the Summits Podcast. We appreciate your continued support. Don't forget to like this, hit that subscription button, hit the little notification bell so you can see when new episodes drop. And uh, hey, I'll even say it, boiler up. <laughs> And don't forget, in addition to that, beat cancer.